this is Danny from Danny Design Studio. Thank you again for joining me today. We're on day nine of the 12 Days of Christmas series. And if these videos are something you like and would like to see more, then please like and subscribe by pressing the subscribe button at the right hand side of the screen and then you'll be able to see notifications of when I upload so you don't miss anything. And you can also catch up with past videos. Also, if you haven't got a demonstrator, I would love to be your demonstrator. You can join my team, lots of team perks, and that is starting off in January 2021. So please get in touch with no obligation if you would like to know more about that. Now today we're going to be doing this lovely little project. And this is a lint chocolate egg. Um, it's the 100 gram one and it's just wrapped in foil so I thought actually it's really lovely for children and if you wanted to put it in a children's stocking it to create a box for it it will um, protect it a little bit more if you're going to put it into a stocking or something so and these with the li little jingle bells makes it just a little bit more fun doesn't it so it's just a top like that and it doesn't roll around um, it's created I've designed it especially for this so and it's glued to the bottom so um, just a few glue dots at the bottom now the dimensions are five and a quarter times three times two and a quarter and with this I have used the the lovely Ponsettia Place suite, um, this lovely sheer ribbon and um, and I've taken out the the real red and the old olive those are the, the colours that I'm using here so I've used those papers here but I'm going to use um, some slightly different papers so I'm using old olive and real red this time and I'm also going to use, do all the scoring with the trimmer because some of you I know haven't got um, the, the simply scored scoring tool and some of you have asked me how do I use it with the trimmer so I thought I'll use this this time so that you can see what how to do it so with this box it has a a front and a back um, and I've had to do it like this because it has this little window um, and in order to get the the die cut through the die cutter it needs to be less than six inches so I've had to do it so that the there's a front and a back and um, all will become clear in a minute so let's score the front so you need a piece of card which is four by eight um, that's four by eight inches and I'm going to try that's imperial I'm going to try and put the metric on um, the description as well so then um, I'm going to go up to half an inch I'm going to get my cutter right out of the way because you don't want that with the stamping up trimmer you want the light colour scoring tool. So I'm going to put it up to half an inch, which is there, and I'm going to score. And I'm going to do that, that side. And the, this is the top side, on three sides basically. So these three sides and then with this side with the long long strip at the top I'm going to score at two and a quarter so I'm going to score to there so that's the scoring done on the front so I'm going to put that to one side you then want the back part which is ten and a quarter times seven and a quarter so then you're going to score with the long side at the top 
just put this arm out. With the long side at the top, you're going to score at two and a quarter. So if you find the two and then the quarter, so getting your cutting tool out of the way, then seven and a half. And then nine and three quarters. So I'm going right up to there, nine and three quarters. And I'm going to score. With the short side at the top, I'm going to score at two and a quarter. Five and a quarter. And then I'm going to, on this, there's a square in the middle and a rectangle at the top. And I just want to have a little mark at the top here. I'm just going to do that in pencil. Of half an inch. So I'm lining this up, half an inch there. And it's so hard to see with all these lights. And then half an inch at this end, just marking it with a pencil. So that's your scoring done. And then what I do need to do is get a ruler and then mark that, score that. from that little pencil mark down to that second uh, horizontal line. I'm going to mark that and same again on this side because that's part of your cutting. So putting that aside for the moment, we're going to work on the front bit first. So <clears throat> we need to burnish all of this very carefully and this card is quite stiff so you do need a, a good tool for this and you get a nice crisp finish So, you then need to cut up this little rectangle here, cut up here, and then wedge that a little bit. Exactly the same on this side. With this bit, we're going to take these little squares at the end out and then just notch that a little bit and that. These little tabs are basically, they're just going to join to the back of your box. Now, the best thing to do here is to do your little window. So, what I'm using for the window is the Stitch So Sweetly dies. And in here, I have got these two. And I'm going to use this as a frame afterwards. So, the, the largest and the second largest is what I'm using. So you then put that, so this is the base of your box and that is the front. So you want your teddy to be seen. You don't want it down there because you won't see the head of the teddy. So you want it to place it sort of around about here. I'm going to use a little bit of washi tape, but you could use post-it notes just to keep that in place. Now with this, I find that 
need to take some of the sticky off because the problem with this is that when you take it off on your nice card this is the front and you don't want it to spoil the card you also have to this is going to go inwards and you need to have it so that it's clear of that it just gives a nicer finish at the top of the box so you need to pop it place your die just slightly below where you think it will will come it this is going to fold over and then you've got to basically put it slightly lower than where you think it would fold over just so that it gives a nicer finish and then you put that through your die cut die cutter and I have got one here already so then we're going to put our window sheet in so your window sheet is five times two and three quarters so I'm going to put that in there like that and to do that I think it will probably be easier to have my tear and tape so that just one bit there and one bit here because it's going to be difficult once you put your box together to put the window in take your tear and tape off put your window sheet in there we go and then this little bit I would also fold over I'm just going to put tear and tape I think it's easier with tear and tape on these window sheets to actually glue wet glue doesn't really hold it so this does really well and as you can see you've got a little gap so that you don't see that at the front so you're then going to put a little um, frame around there so what you need a piece of real red and with your frame you have already used used sorry you've used these two no i beg your pardon you've used this one sorry so thought there was something not quite right so not the largest one you've got the second and um the one next to that so not the largest one you haven't used that as a window no so then you need to take that off because i need to just show you how to line it up i'm going to use these two stickies so you're going to use that and then put the next one into the middle so and then stick that in place I'm just going to quickly go through the die cutter with this so then that will fit perfectly over there so you can either raise it up or you can just glue it on if you're going to use your wet glue just be careful that it doesn't all splodge out you only want a little bit because otherwise when you press this down it's all going to go everywhere and it will ruin your look oh, chairs so far away right and then you need to line it up nicely you 
use my bone folder with the wet glue you've got a little bit of time to adjust because you want to get it right a little bit of glue on there And that's it so that's the front of your your box I'm going to put that aside so then we're going to do the the bait the back of the box so these lines you can just barely see but what I'll do is I'll just burnish it Right, so then that's the top of your box. So that little tab there, this is the base of your box. So you're gonna cut, there's a little square, square rectangle square. These squares we're just going to cut into a little bit because these are gonna be hidden away. Same on the other side. So that's the base of your box. Now this bit, turn it right round. So you've got this little faint line that we did with the ruler, didn't we? So I'm going to cut this little rectangle here Now remember this is the top of your box so you really want to do it as straight as you can with your scissors because this is what is going to be seen and so you, you want to do it as neat take your time over it don't rush like me because these edges, this edge and that edge is what people are going to see. So you can just about barely see that mark. This is just really a tab. You then want to cut this at an angle slightly and the same angle that you've used there, use it here because again, that's what people are going to see. You then need to get your little trio punch and you want a corner rounder. If you haven't got a corner rounder, I would just use something um, round and pencil it in and round your corner like that until, because this, you could put on your wish list uh, corner rounder because it is good to have because I think um, it's something you can invest in but if you haven't got it for the moment it doesn't matter um, you can use other things but it does look better with a corner rounder sorry I'm gonna the camera's gonna shake I'm afraid probably so you fold these tabs back and I'm gonna round that corner so I'm going to put this and it's a little bit fiddly you just sort of have to adjust because of the thickness of the card it doesn't really want to go and also that's come up a little bit so we'll try again there we go so make sure it's in the right hand corner and then press down so same with this side there we go, so that's going to be look a lot better. Right, so now we've got to make up our box. So you get your front bit, that's the tab that you want. So the back of your box is there, 
that tab is going to join to here. Now again, with this, you want to t spend a little bit of time getting this right. Just trying to think where I'm going to put it. Right, so that. Put your tear and tape on. That didn't come off properly. There we go. Tear and tape. Excellent stuff it is. Right, so it is worth spending a little few minutes getting this right. So you want that edge to be lined up flush with that edge, that to be lined up with that edge and and if you can see I want I want this edge because this is the front and people are going to see that so it takes a little bit of time press it right down and there we go so then you're going to put that onto that side and you can see the box is coming together but before we do that, we're going to decorate your box with your DSP. So, <clears throat> DSP is, let me just see, the DSP is two lots of two by five inches, one five times two and three quarters, and the top is two and three quarters times two inches. So then I'm going to, this is not a directional paper, but um, it can work both ways. So then I'm gonna just put my glue on all four sides. I think I'll do wet glue this time. So just put this out of the way for a minute. So you want these three sides, that and then that's the top. So that I'm just you just get a little border around the edge. So these are the two edges, and then you've got the one in the middle. put a little bit of glue on this side to be careful you don't put glue too near the edge because it just splodges out and ruins your card but trying to align it so that they're all the same sort of edge down the bottom And then this one goes at the top. Press it all down. A few minutes and then it's done. Right, so this is the last bit. Sometimes it's just nice to burnish this again so that you get a nice closure on your box. So the last bit is to put a bit of tear and tape on this side. And that should 
would line up and again just have a look at the edges line it up it's got a good edge there we go that's done right and then i want this flap because that's the front of my box so i want this one to have a good finish so it goes backwards so then all I need to do is put some more tear and tape on the bottom. And then once you're happy, Close your box and you can give it a good poke inside so that it's all down nicely with your bone folder. And there we go. Window <laughs> gets quite dirty, but we can clean that. Right, so then we can pop him inside. What I've done with the other one is I put a little couple of glue dots so he doesn't wiggle around, but I'm not going to do it this time. So then we need to do um, decorate the front bit. So with your Stitch So Sweetly dies, we've got, I've used this and I've used that uh, little die. So cut them out already. So that's the red and in that kind of paper I could see soft sea foam in there so I thought I'll I'll use that to bring that colour out. So then I've got, um, I've used the stamp pad, perfectly plaid, because I thought this is a children's little box and I thought it'd be nice to have ho 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 on it and it fits quite well on this on this little die cut so sorry my head might come into the camera and that's a real red stamp pad put that away before I get it everywhere and then what I've done is I've just raised it on some dimensionals And you can use whatever colours you've got with the real red. You don't have to go with this. I had some scraps of paper, so I thought I'd use it up. And I could see soft sea foam in there. Um, and I'm using the Gilded Gems just to pick out the gold that's in the teddy bear. Just decorating it one of those and a little one and then popping that at the front so again it's difficult to put glue you don't want glue onto your onto your window sheet so I would put the glue at the bottom half of your little die cut your sentiment rather than to the top half because you don't want glue splodging about so that then goes on to there we're getting there so the next and the last stage is to find my real ribbon there it is twine and the jingle bells so this is the, the real red sheer ribbon, which is just so lovely. I've used this a lot um, and it goes perfectly with this. So because obviously this box hasn't got a closure as such. So um, 
the ribbon is just its closure. So I'm just going to tie a knot and then a bow. You can adjust the tails. And then I've got a couple of pieces of twine. I've doubled it and cut it. Taken a couple of jingle bells, maybe the red, the green, or the red, or the red and the green instead of the gold. Hmm. Decisions. I don't know. Choose those. So, put it around your bow, tie a knot, tie a little bow. And then with one of them, oops, a bit fiddly, I'm going to thread that through, keep hold of that one, with another one of these little twiny bits, thread your other one through, tie a knot, And then maybe a double knot just to be safe. Don't want it wandering around and coming off. So then you can just cut twine off to whatever you fancy. Maybe just a little bit shorter at an angle. And that's it. There we go. I think any child would be lovely, would love to receive one of these. And I think the inner child in all of us would like to receive one of these as well. Anyway, until next time, I hope you enjoyed this project. Until next time, thank you very much for joining me. And I'll see you next time. In the meantime, happy stamping crafters. If you like this video, please click the like button below and please subscribe and select the bell icon to all to receive notifications of when I upload. Thank you.